Um, afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Adam Mutt. I'm from Leonardo. Um, and with my colleague Terry over here, we're going to do a short presentation on the emerging trends uh, shaping process driven application development. That'll be that one there. Um, so, I guess the challenge um, that we're seeing today is that to better develop good enterprise wide process driven applications, the, the level of entry to get into doing that development is quite high. I don't know if anyone here has tried to install PAM on OpenShift or anything like that. It can be a bit of a nightmare. So there's these new modern architectures that are creating new challenges for us. Um, so we're seeing that the level of entry is quite high to be able to start developing on them. And um, even the technical skills required can be quite prohibitive to try and get started. So at Leonardo, what we've decided to do is try and streamline that install, um, configure, uh, environment that you can easily then develop on top of. So hence removing the barrier of entry so that you can actually start using the tool the way it was meant to be used, getting it in the hands of the people that need to be uh, using it. Okay, so what we're calling that uh, solution is uh, the Leonardo Pi. Um, feel free to laugh now. Um, so that's the process improvement environment, um, improving your process one slice at a time. So. Those slices are uh, things we're calling PAMlets, and I'll talk about them in a second. So what is Pi and what are PAMlets? What is the Pi? So think of um, the process improvement environment as an OpenShift base. Um, it's got the process automation manager installed into it. It has your decision manager installed into it. And you have then the ability to drop in what we're calling these PAMlets into that environment. Now these PAMlets, they are self-contained solutions, if you like. Um, last year, I think we gave a presentation on processes as a microservice. So it's taking that um, level of thinking one step further to say, okay, if I have a process as a microservice and I'd like to be able to drop it into a containerized environment, I can now do that. Right? So an example of a, a PAMlet might be uh, an accounts payable process. It might be a loans initiation process or a mortgage application process or a credit card dispute, which we're going to show as part of this demonstration. Okay, so the vision I guess we have is you know, open source has changed the way that we think about software and how we deliver that. You know, and that's the Red Hat message. And you know, we saw yesterday in the, in the partner conference you know, 69 quarters of growth on giving away free software, which is quite phenomenal. So what, the way we see that this going forward, and we're going to touch on a open source project that um, Terry and I have been working on with Red Hat and other partners with at the end of the presentation. But the way we see is that we'd like to give this back to the community as an open source project in an open source way, which will then encourage other partners and other developers around the world to engage the technology that we you know, would like them to, and, and, and I'm sure Red Hat would, um, and actually contribute to this project as we go forward. But we'll talk more about that later. So I'm going to kick over to Terry now, who's going to get into the, the technical detail. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> yeah. So um, we sort of sit down and think about uh, what is preventing us taking up uh, people to pick up more open source software and how do you do process improvement in a more consistent way. So I, I think there's a three key things in here. So one, that we got to have a, a standardized of technology, standardization of technology stack to a reference architecture. There's a lot of open source projects out there. Um, you know, how do we leverage them? What is the way, best way of leveraging them? So that's standardization through reference architecture and technology. Uh, another thing is what we found is that um, installation and deployments of these you know, technology stack are quite extensive. So what we want to do is target a particular personas and use case so that we are able to, to standardize this process in a much simpler way. So use case and persona are important. Uh, we also need a simple and realistic real-life examples, as many as we can. So we just previously we mentioned about mortgage process, uh, credit card dispute process, and um, you know, online form process. I think those are quite a common examples. And what we want to do is provide those examples into the open source solutions so that people can download and start using them. So I think these are the three uh, key things in our approach. So first thing, we, we go and sit down and go, so who are the people that is going to use this? Like, you know, what are the problems we try to solve? So if you look at the uh, um, pre-sales and enterprise architect, they're more interested in seeing an outcome, a solution outcome to the business. 
Uh, we got a developer who are more looking at the, you know, things like, so how do I download this quickly, install the play around with the source code, and what does that do to, you know, to the solutions? So we also got a solution architect who's more interested in how do I fit these components, this technology together with other technologies? You know, is there any real life success example of that, right? And then we got a last person who is more a platform architect or platform engineer who is interested, how do I deploy this? How do I make a CICD? How do I automate this? So any enterprise architect in the room? Oh, good, great. Um, any pre-sale architect? Oh, I hope it's enough from our competitors. <laughs> no, so this is, this is good. So um, as, as a pre-sale architect or enterprise architect, we're really more interested at you know, how does the technology solve a problem that my stakeholders, such as you know, general managers, our business, uh, are interested in. So can I you know, just play around with the technology, demonstrate it to them, so it's sort of more, more clicking for them? But if you're a pre-sale architect, you really want to prepare a demonstration that is ready to go, right? Um, if you are a developer, so any developer in the rooms? I, uh, yeah, so developers are very shy, so it's about 10. So if I triple that, it's about probably right. <laughs> so I, I guess for you guys, if you haven't done Red Hat technology before, you're probably more interested in downloading the Red Hat technology, you know, down some, download some sample code and you know, change something and see what happened to it, right? So that's, that's the way I would learn uh, as a developer. I think, you know, having a pen that running on container platform, productionize that is great. But how do you start playing around with it in your local machine? That's, you know, that's a, that's a problem. I mean, you want to learn things, you know, as, as you through the experiment. So um, solution architect, I'm sure there's some solution architect here. So if, if there's lots of them, we just have to divide by two because everybody likes to call solution architect. But really, the solution architect is more about, you know, how does the pen, how does the decision manager, how does Fuse, they all work together with other technologies such as you know, Salesforce and all other technology you want to integrate with. So as a solution architect, you're more interested in overall solutions and how they work together as a component. Having ability to say, look, you know, we, as, a, as, a, as a pen process that you got this mortgage process that does this part of the solutions, then you can sort of, sort of conceptualize how that part of the solution is going to fit with, say, your backend you know, customer service. Now, as a platform engineer, um, I'm sure there's lots of you guys here as well um, who are more interested, you know, oh, I, I don't really care about these pen things. I just wanted to run on OpenShift environments. In fact, I don't even want to know about it. I just want to deploy it automatically all the time. I don't want even to fail. So I'm sure someone in the world must have thought about you know, automating how to deploy this pen. Can I just get an example of that in Jenkins? Right? You know, things like this make, sort of make sense. So what we want to do is bring all these problems together and sort of have a showcase, uh, if you like, a real life problems that you can download a source code for, yet at the same time can sort of run on your laptop. So before we jump into the demos, I'm sure you all want to see the demo. This is sort of technology component that we're working with, um, but I think at the center of it, it's really just around pen, process automation managers, and, and as a process-centric applications. And that runs in, say, the OpenShift container platforms. So you can run that in your own container platform. You can run it in our container platform, Leonardo's. Or you can run on your laptop, which is a Red Hat called CDK or MiniShift. So let's look at a persona one at a time. So um, as an architect, I like to solve all problems with one hammer. But that's, that's not how the world works. So what we sort of sit down and think about is, like, oh, you know, between the different persona that we just identified before, they actually have a different needs. And that needs have a different uh, requirement on the hardware. So if you look at it as a demo um, persona, that's someone who just want to see how the things work together. You really don't need an authoring environment, meaning you don't actually need to do development. You just want to see the result of that. So what that is, um, in technically speaking, is essentially a runnable container Docker image that you're just going to run on your you know, CDK. And that requires less memory. Sandbox dev environment, you get to see the source code. Um, you deploy some image. You know, that's require a little bit more memories. And if you look at sandbox DevOps environment where it comes with a sample pipeline, that obviously leaves not more memory. Now, if you, you know, 
after you play around with this, wouldn't it be nice that once you purchase or you haven't purchased Red Hat products, you go, let's go you know, have this development environment ready to go on day one. So your project team can start doing development with all the sample source code in it. That, you know, you're gonna, for example, if you show your uh, stakeholder a credit card dispute demo, and that demo with the source code, all operational in this dev environment in the cloud, ready for you to go. You know, that's somewhere that we want to get to as well. So here's the demo, and I promise there will be some command line, you know, just to keep up with the Red Hat traditions here. But before we go jump into that, let's look uh, at uh, what, what's going to be in the pipes. Um, so essentially, on the left-hand side, we've got the Nintendo, run, uh, Nintendo front end user experience UI, and we also got the process automation, uh, immutable Kai servers, and you know, some fancy stuff like that. But we also have the routes and the servers that is going to be deployed on your local machines for you to actually you know, access this environment. So just some of the background how we sort of bake these pies, I suppose. So we got a not so secret spice, which is all open source. The source code is available on Git, you know, and also all the um, application runtime is from Red Hat. So what we do is in our cloud environments, we pull that down and we start building that as a Docker image. And by the end of the S2Is and, and Jenkins pipeline, all of that image is pushed up to Quay, uh, again, public, public available repository. And that becomes, uh, I guess, the ready to eat. Now, once you uh, follow our instruction, which you will get um, at the end of this um, uh, PowerPoint or this presentation, there's going to be a QR code for you to just have a look. And, and that will have a landing page videos and everything, everything you see here will be there, including the repository. So you'll be able to start downloading that. And come with that is the automation scripts that essentially does all this already. So you'll be able to see the demo that I'm going to show you. In fact, you can play around with it as well. So let's have a look at the demos. Um, so there's literally three steps for us to do. Download the Leonardo part, um, execute the, the scripts. There you go. Command line. Right. So the first thing is we download this uh, Git repo, um, download the, the scripts from Leonardo's. And once you download it, you've got some option that you have to pick. For example, you know, what kind of C how many CPU you needed, uh, how many RAM you want to allocate to these, uh, what sample uh, example you want to download, in this case, a credit card a CCD demos. And then you need a Red Hat um, uh, username and password, so that allows you to download from Red Hat um, the, the, all the images, the pen, and all that. And once that's done, essentially you just, just wait. I mean, this, if you're on MBN, on 100 megabyte, you probably take about 15 minutes. But if you are in hotel, you probably take two days. Um, it's you know, about 15 gigs, it's not much. And, and then after that, essentially the OpenShift, uh, the MiniShift or CDK is going to start run on your laptop. And if you've got very powerful machine like MacBook Pro, Pro, then it's like probably about 10 minutes to start up. Um, if you got like a Mac Pro, it probably like just you know, five minutes. So um, once it's start up, you get this prompt, which you, you guys are probably familiar with. It's essentially an OpenShift landing page. And this is running on your local machines, by the way. Now we're just going to go some verification. So the credit card dispute a project. If it's up and running, yep, it is up and running. Um, there's essentially three projects here. One is the customer. The other one is the administrator. The other one is essentially the business process. Um, at this point in time, we just want to check all the ports up and running because depending on the CPU power, it takes a bit of time. So we just wait here for the, all the container to run. That's waiting. Imagine I actually do this in life. Um, now all up and running, right? So because we got a route, so we click on the route and that will go to the credit card dispute landing page. Now after this, essentially we have the pipe ready to run on your local machines. Now, the, the next bit of the presentation is about, um, I don't know if you've seen the credit card dispute demos that I've done a few times, but essentially, it's an it's a Nintendo front end where um, there's, a, there's a number of transactions, and the customers can use that user interface to click on the transaction they think is not um, legitimate. And that transaction then will go through a workflow which is typically a workflow that a lot of company implement as a business process rule or business rule in the front end, like you know, for example, in the browser or even in the process backend. 
But what we did is we, we actually implemented a business rule like using de decision managers to allow us to have a dynamic interaction with a question and answer. So depending on the answer of your previous questions, you get a different set of questions. Right? So that's literally why it work, how it works in, in real life when you dispute something like, you know, have you got a credit card with you all the time? If you say yes, you've got a different set of questions. If you say no, they've got a different set of questions. All of these are actually dynamically generated on a business rule. So in this particular demo, let's go through it. So there's no more comment line, I promised. So that's the, the notification. So these are four notifications right now. And you're going to see fifth one. So now I just click into it. I pick two transactions to this build. And it jumps through the workflow process here. And at this point in time, the process, business process hasn't kick-started. So I just go to confirm. Yeah, this is correct. Click, and I'll go next. And now there's a set of questions that we just, I just spoke about. These are all dynamic generated based on your question and answer. You know, at this time, you, the, it was with you, and is in your positions. So all of these are actually compliance and regulatory questions that you know, people have to go through anyway. But what we're trying to do here is to ensure when any changes to that compliance is actually you know, applicable in your business rule. So you can change the business rule. We don't change any user interface. Automatically, it will happen in the front end. Obviously, you still have to go through the process of making sure everybody's happy with that change. So now we just uh, got to the last couple of questions. Uh, this is the free text, and then we go, yes. So once we click the submit, we actually kicks our business process, a pen process. And that pen says once in the back end. So now we're going to jump to the user perspective. The user uh, now is going to see a new notifications uh, on the right-hand side corner. So here you go. There's a new notification coming up. Now, as, as, a, as a bank who is processing this, wouldn't it be nice to have a, 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 a nice administration council for people to interact with what's been disputed, which is what you see here. So all the statistics you see on the top are based on the PEN's um, K, um, API to retrieve those, you know, uh, SL, you know, uh, all those statistics but also all the transactions underneath there that the team member can claim. So literally, um, so this essentially three steps. Um, you get a demo up and running, and this will be something that you probably uh, have a look at yourself and see, oh, okay, that's, that's what, how people design the solutions. And, and if you are enterprise, okay, you go, okay, let's sort of fit what I meant by capabilities, and then present to your customers, or present to your, your stakeholders. So we went through this process, uh, uh, um, a couple of times, and we feel like there's some guiding principle we need to put in place. And again, this is open for feedback, like you know, open source software all the time. So firstly, the pendant, which is um, the credit card distribute demos that need, must run on the Pi, and the pendant must be self-content, um, and whatever we demonstrate must have a business function value to it, and it's real life. Um, the, the first one is that the must work on at least one of those four, four personas, and followed by is must be you know, OCB compatible, uh, you must have a pen process, and finally, when, when we add additional ingredients into this uh, process runtime, it must be uh, compatible. Um, there's a, some future version that we're working through, um, develop more pen -led. you know, obviously more of the example will help the adoptions. Uh, we want to improve more of standard, and we're looking for open source contribution from everybody, right? So it's, you know, it shouldn't be just us. Hopefully, we want to spread this idea. And that's, you know, that leading to um, Adams. I uh, was going to talk about how we're pushing this globally and, and what's the roadmap coming up. Thanks, Tariq. So that kind of rolls into back to what I was describing at the start about how we've been kicking around an open source project with uh, the likes of Red Hat and the BU owners over in Boston and, and great support out of uh, Asia and, and here in Australia with the intent that you know, we are trying to build a I guess a, a, a workflow business process management or you know, that's middle tier solution that uh, organisations are looking for when they don't want to go and spend a huge amount of money on a big monolithic solution. If they're looking for more for a DevOps approach to their process improvement, how do they go about that? Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of samples in the marketplace that allow companies to easily pick up a uh, mortgage um, pro process or a credit card dispute process. So working with Red Hat and other, other um, Red Hat partners, the concept of having this PAM solution exchange kind of evolved over time, um, and Leonardo is proud to be part of that. Now, our, our contribution to that, I guess, initial um, open source project is to provide the environment by which we can run and develop these uh, solutions. So what we 
kind of expect over the you know the next uh, 12 months is that you know, you know currently today you can download it and there'll be a Q code up here and I want everyone to go to it and download it and try and play with Pam um, because it's something you can do today that you couldn't do yesterday, right? Um, by the end of the year, we hope to get more use cases out in the market. Uh, we're going to uh, continue to evolve what this open source project looks like and who the contributors are going to be. And we encourage anyone who downloads this and want to contribute back to, to do so. And then hopefully, by the time we get to summit in 2020, which will be in San Francisco, which everyone will be there, I'm sure. Um, hopefully, by then, we've matured enough where we'll be making some sort of major announcement under the Red Hat banner. Uh, of what this project is, is really about, who's contributing to it, and where it's going to be going. And that involves you know, the standards and governance that goes around that that Terry alluded to. So that's uh, it. I hope you found it uh, informative and uh, are excited to go and start doing uh, your pamphlets and contributing to the open source project. Um, there's a Q code there. Please um, go to the website. Yep. Thank you from me and Terry, and thanks for your time.